Thank you, Mr. Chairman. His Excellency Secretary General of ITU, Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, and Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of Papua New Delegation, I offer congratulations on your election, Mr. Chairman, as a chair of this important conference, and I would like to extend my appreciation to you and the staff of the International Telecommunication Union for organizing this very important conference. Let me also take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to the Government of United Arab Emirates for hosting this WTDC of 2014 and also for extending to all of us participants a very warm welcome. On behalf of the Government of Papua New Guinea, my delegation and personally for myself, I would also like to express my government's deepest sympathy to the Government of Malaysia, particularly to the families of those whose loved ones went missing on the flight MH370. The WTDC 2014 is a landmark global conference which provides members and other stakeholders with the opportunity to assess the progress that has been made since the last uh, World Telecommunication Development Conference in 2010. The world has seen many changes since then. New telecommunication provides, providers have emerged, new telecommunication network, devices, and services also entered the market place bring better choice and new opportunities for all. There is a realization by all of the role that ICT plays in areas of our daily lives and how important they are for social and economic development. These developments have been accompanied by challenges such as security of networks, cybercrime that requires consideration at IS level. Ladies and gentlemen, Please allow me now to share with you briefly key developments in the ICT sector in Papua New Guinea since WTDC 2010 meeting. PNG is a developing country with its estimated population of 7 million in 2013 and is the largest of the uh, Pacific Islands. The government of Papua New Guinea has been conscious of the role adequate of adequate uh, communication service that can play in nation building and has therefore been committed over the past 10 years to ensure that ICT services infrastructure are expanded rapidly. With the introduction of competition in the ICT sector, access to fixed lines and mostly mobile phones have grown from the modest state of less than 10% of the population in 2010 to about 45% in January 2014, and prices for calls have fallen by about 65%. Considerable progress has been made in the open, open, opening of market with the issuing of new licenses and the introduction of regulatory measures to support new entrants. However, overall market remains very fragmented and the development gap is still wide. Many obstacles remain to be overcome and I on the list include the need to connect all our citizens that remain unconnected. We believe in increase our level of connectivity with all leads to broadband service becoming widely available and affordable. Papua New Guinea government recognized that broadband is an accelerator of social and economic development in the modern world and creator of inter international competitiveness in the global information economy. Therefore, in late 2013, my government adopted national broadband policy that will see PNG capitalize on the existing technology to facilitate innovation, enhance competi competitiveness, increase productivity, and economic development, promote greater social inclusion, and facilitate the sustainable use of broadband service in the future. The government has also initiated projects aimed at accelerating the use of broadband service in PNG, and this, in, this includes the e-government project aimed at providing key government services online to citizens, and the development of national broadband infrastructure currently undertaken in connection with the PNG LNG gas project. A rural communication program is soon, soon to be implemented with its aim at encouraging private sector to build and operate communication network initially funded by loan from the World Bank. The rural communication program is part of the ex universal access program aimed at connecting all unconnected communities of Papua New Guinea and will be funded along in the long run by Universal Service Fund sustained through ICT operator levy model. Long-term evolution, spectrum license has also 
been granted to mobile operators, which will not only further extend the reach of ICT services and infrastructure, but also support the role out of mobile broadband service in PNG. The PNG government has also set the target of year 2017 for switchover from analog to digital terrestrial radio and television broadcasting. My government has also commenced to work on SIM card registration scheme and is now considered a draft of a national cyber policy enabling legislation aimed at establishing a cyber legislative framework. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I wish to acknowledge the support and assistance rendered by ITU to our country, particularly in areas of spectrum management, broadband policy formulation, cyber legislation, and analog to digital transition mapping. ITU's involvement in this program, I must say, has been a motivating experience and very successful indeed. The ministry I'm holding is looking forward to partnership with ITU. All of you, since we have we all have shared goals, concern, and desire for success. I have no doubt that together we will be able to move and ahead of much faster than if we work alone. Delegates from across the world have gathered here in Dubai to discuss the implementation of Dubai Action Plan and to propose further steps that will pave the way for future policy in telecommunication, leading to a truly global information society for all. I'm hopeful and also certain that discussions here in Dubai will make a difference. We are also pleased that WTDC 14 will consider issues that are indeed pertinent to us in the Pacific, which are contained in the APT common proposal, such as tele telephone number misuse, cybersecurity, addressing digital divide, and strengthening the execution role of BDT. It is our view that WTDC 2014 can contribute positively to the ultimate aim of advancing the achievement of internationally agreed development goals and objectives, including Millennium Development Goals. With your leadership, Mr. Chairman, and the efforts of the distinct delegates, I'm confident that we can produce real progress toward these goals and objectives. To you, Mr. Chairman, and to all our colleagues, I extend on behalf of Papua New government our best wishes for a very successful conference. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.